you know, there's something I recently learned that it's almost embarrassing to say that I should have known this long ago. And it relates to GROSS, which stands for Generally Recognized as Safe. And this designation goes along with certain chemicals that are put out in our environment and food, implying that it probably went through a lot of different safety studies, right? And it's regulated by the FDA. But apparently what I just learned about this is that the FDA allows companies to self-certify their poisons, I'm sorry, chemicals as being safe. And I mean, think about this. We have like 10,000 chemicals in our food supply and 99% of them have not really been reviewed uh, for safety. And so this leads me to uh, a new definition that I want to share with you. It's called a loophole. And relating to this topic, a loophole is something that uh, a company can use to avoid certain restrictions. And that's exactly what this gross is. It's a big fat loophole that companies use to imply that their chemicals are safe, despite other testing done by other facilities, which is quite fascinating because many chemicals that are allowed in the US are not allowed in Europe. Yeah, and today I'm just gonna talk about six of these poisons, I mean chemicals that are generally considered as safe. I like how they use the word generally, so they don't have to be that specific about it. So the first one on the list is nitrates, okay? Nitrates are, are those things that they use to uh, preserve meat. Um, it's in like bacon, processed meats, things like that, to keep that meat from turning gray, okay? So it keeps it red. It increases the shelf life, but it does uh, increase the risk of cancer. It's also uh, could be in your drinking water. Now, here's the thing. When you see on the label that the nitrates are coming from something like celery juice, uh, that's a completely different type of nitrate. I'm talking about like things like sodium nitrate, things like that. All right, number two, BHA. Okay, this is a preservative. This increases shelf life, but it's a known endocrine disruptor. It messes with your endocrine system and hormones. It's also been linked to cancer. It's considered a carcinogen. And if you ask someone about what causes cancer, you know, people will say certain toxins and chemicals in the environment. There's a whole classification of these toxins called carcinogens, right? And the accumulation of carcinogens could definitely increase your risk of getting a cancer. So that's BHA. There's another one called BHT, which is another preservative, and you see it in a lot of different foods. It too is an endocrine disruptor. It messes with your kidney, your liver, and it also increases cancer risk. So you just really need to read the labels and watch for these chemicals, and there's a lot of them too. All right, next one on the list is called potassium bromide. This is a, uh, a dough conditioner. I'm talking about the, the dough that you would use to make bread. It's used in a lot of flour products, and it gives that product a certain texture, potassium bromide. Now, potassium bromide is a carcinogen, okay? It causes cancer, and it can definitely mess with the thyroid, and it can inhibit iodine. And so the antidote or remedy or thing that you can use to counter bromide in the body is iodine, whether it's in sea kelp or when you eat seafood. The next one also includes bromide. It's called brominated vegetable oil. Now, this is a flavor stabilizer. And usually in beverages, okay, especially citrus sodas, things like that, and it keeps the flavoring kind of constant so it doesn't fluctuate. But it's also a flame retardant. It affects your nervous system, which can affect your brain, which can affect your memory. This chemical can also interfere with iodine. And so iodine would be like the antidote or something to kind of counter the effects of that. But of course, the best option is to just avoid the food that they put these chemicals in. Now, the last one, titanium dioxide. This heavy metal gives candy kind of a smooth texture. Kind of like that surface area that's really shiny and bright because it also gives a white color. And if you actually have different colorings, as in food colorings, it can make those um, colors pop really bright and brilliant. And unfortunately, a lot of these chemicals are in the foods that kids eat. And at that age, they just don't have the judgment to be able to determine these chemicals yet. But it's up to the parent's judgment if the parent is aware of these chemicals. There's one little tiny problem with this heavy metal. It uh, causes DNA breaks. 
damage with your chromosomes, which can link to an increased risk of cancer. And the uh, kind of the antidote or remedy for that is a volcanic ash mineral called uh, zeolite, as well as infrared sauna. But I think the best thing to do is just to avoid it. But typically we have in our bodies, especially in the liver, the ability to get rid of a lot of these poisons if we don't consume too many. However, when I'm doing this recent deep dive in DNA, I found quite a few people who have a problem with their detoxification genes. And so they have a lessened ability to get rid of these poisons, which means they need to avoid them as well as consume foods that help the detoxification process like cruciferous vegetables, which have certain phytonutrients that help stimulate this detoxification process. Now I have a really good video describing that phenomena right here. Check it out. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.